And hi, I'm here on the roof of Shanahan to talk about lenses and the thin lens law. See, it's a beautiful January day. We just got some snow. All right, so I'm on the other side now in the sun. It's very warm. I've got four lenses here that I will test. Three converging lenses and one diverging lens. Let's see how these work. All right, I have my four lenses here, and I'm going to measure their focal distance by treating the sun as a source of parallel rays. Now, the sun is so far away that the ratio of the distance between the sun and the diameter of one of these lenses is about 10 to the 13. So the rays are flat to within one part in 10 to the 13, straight and parallel. All right, so here's my, my lens C1. I'm going to roughly align it with the sun. That helps if I hold this uh, ruler like this. There, the shadow is straight. There we go. And if I take my lens perpendicular to the line of sight and focus it, I can measure approximately where the light comes to focus. And it's about at 10 centimeters. Let me do the same thing with C2. And I'll hold my ruler, align it with the sun, and go back and forth. This one's a little bit farther. This one comes to focus somewhere around 18 centimeters. And let me do the same thing with C3. C3 has a much shorter focal distance. In fact, it's going to be a little bit hard to measure the way I've got it here. So the focal distance for C3, I can't quite even get it straight here, but I would estimate that it's somewhere around three, four, five centimeters. Uh, it'd be a little bit easier if the sun was directly overhead, but because it's January, it's at a pretty steep angle. All right, I've got a diverging lens here, and diverging lens uh, makes everything look smaller when you look through it, um, and it doesn't focus the light in front of it. In fact, if I, if I do the same, same operation here, you can see that at short distances, it's actually spreading the light out. There's a, a halo that's growing as opposed to a halo that's shrinking, that's concentrating it. All right, so here we have an imaging setup. And what you need for an imaging setup is a source, like either this dollar bill or this light bulb, and a lens. In this case, we have C1, which had a focal length of about 10 centimeters, and some sort of screen to project the image onto. And you can't really see uh, the image because it's a little too bright in here. So let me turn off the lights. Okay, so here we have our imaging setup, the dollar bill source, the lens, and the image. And you can see from the uh, focused camera, the small camera, that the dollar bill is in focus at this position. And if I move the plane in or out, the dollar bill becomes out of focus. There's only really one spot where the dollar bill is perfectly in focus, and it's about there. And you'll also notice that the dollar bill is upside down because uh, when a lens forms an image, it inverts that image. How should we think about this image forming process? Well, if you think about rays coming off of each and every point on the dollar bill and going in all possible directions at all possible angles, and the lens refocuses the light at every point to be converging to a particular spot uh, only at a particular image distance. So no matter what the x and y coordinates of the light coming from this dollar bill are, for each one of those x and y coordinates, there's all possible angles coming out, and the lens focuses all those angles back down to a particular x and y coordinate on the dollar bill. Now let me play with this a little bit and you can see some, some, uh, some properties of this. So you can see right now that the distance between the dollar bill and the lens is larger than the distance between the dollar bill and the image. And if I were to move the lens back, I would need to change the focal position. I would need to move the focal position back but as I move the focal position back, uh, the image 
is smaller when it's in focus, and the distance between the lens and the image is smaller when it's in focus. And eventually I can keep doing this. So as I move the lens back, I have to move the lens closer to the image. And the size of the image gets smaller and smaller the farther back I go. Okay, so how about the other way? If we move the lens closer, you can see this little spot here is actually from this, this light bulb back here. I put that light bulb right over the image, a little spot. Let me get it in focus. There we go. That little spot uh, is over the image. Uh, let's go the other way. Let's move the lens quite close. I'll have to keep adjusting this image plane to keep it in focus. So here we're pretty close to even. The distances between the dollar bill and the lens and the dollar bill and the image are pretty similar. And the size of the dollar bill is about the same uh, as the image of the dollar bill. Now let me go even closer here. So as I go closer, I'll move this closer. Uh, and here, it's not... Oh, hold on. It's a little bit harder to really determine where it's exactly in focus. Let's see if I can adjust the focus on this. It's the problem with doing optics, filming it. Um, the size of the image is, is much larger when I'm close and it's much more spread out. And even closer, I have to adjust. Uh, I think that might be about as good as I'm gonna get right about right around here is the last place where you can really make out the image of the dollar bill. All right, that is a single converging lens forming an image of different sizes with different object distances and image distances. Okay, so now I have a two lens imaging system. I have my source, the dollar bill, I have my first lens and my second lens, and I'm forming an image of the face of the dollar bill right side up on the image plane. So how does this work? Well, this first lens forms, forms an image of the dollar bill around there, which, uh, see on the GoPro and that first image upside down serves as the object for the second lens which then reforms the image right around there somewhere right side up and I can tell that this is where the second lens forms an image because if I take this light bulb and I move it to about where I saw the first image I will see an image of the light bulb form somewhere around there. So you can see where this lens is forming an image, yep, right around there. So when there's an object where the light bulb is, it will form an image at the image plane, and it's the first lens that's forming an image of the dollar bill at that location which then gets re-imaged onto the image plane. Okay, so now we're gonna consider the slightly more complicated case of a diverging lens. And what I have set up here is I have the same dollar bill, I have a converging lens, and it is not forming an image. The image is blurry. And I can ask, where would an object have to be in order to form an image on the plate? And I can do that by moving this light bulb around. So with my single Converging lens here, I'm going to move my light bulb around until I get a focused image, and it's about there. It's a few centimeters behind where I have this mount. So if, if an image was formed here, or if an object is a few centimeters behind this mount, this converging lens will form an image on the paper. So let me remove my, my test object here, my light bulb, put my diverging lens there. So when I put my diverging lens there, it forms 
a focused image of the dollar bill. I've already pre-aligned everything to, uh, to form that focused image. And so from this, we can conclude that the diverging lens here is forming a virtual image behind it, which becomes the object for this converging lens to form an image. Okay, finally, we have a case of two converging lenses that are quite close, except this time, the image that's formed by the first converging lens is not in between the two lenses. I can see that because I can take out the second lens and the image isn't formed up here, it's formed way back here. That's about where it's in focus. And so this first lens is forming an image way over here, which is on the wrong side of this second lens. And I put it in. And so from the second lens's perspective, since the object that it's using to form the image is on the wrong side, it is a virtual object. And so the actual virtual object that the second lens is using is behind the image screen.